Hello there, welcome to Nerd World Films. In this episode, which is episode 2 in a relatively new series I've been doing on this channel about various different movie vehicles of descriptions, which previously I have done only so far, the tripods from War of the Worlds, and my chair is going off to the side. Let me stop that. In this one, I am looking at one of my favourite vehicles from actually one of my favourite franchises that I very, very rarely touch on in any of my channels, and that is the Imperial 8080, constructed by Kuat Drive Yards. Before we get started, please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below as it all helps the channel, and at the moment this channel really needs a lot of help to grow as it's very small. I have two other channels, both of which are also quite small at the moment. They're linked in the description below. We've got Nerd Worlds, very similar to this, but it's a bit more television and cult and franchise based. Whereas Nerd World History is more factual and about historical events and people and objects that take my interest. If either of those channels sound interesting to you, please check them out. Like, share, subscribe over there. Help them grow too. It'll all be appreciated. With all that said, let's get started on the Imperial AT-80. One of the finest and most ridiculous, gigantic weapons of war ever put to screen, first appearing in The Empire Strikes Back. This vehicle, as I said, was constructed by the Kuat Drive Yards for the Galactic Empire, although very early versions of it did exist at the tail end of the Clone Wars, made for the Galactic Republic instead. The vehicle is somewhat cumbersome, only having four legs, as commented on by Captain Rex, the fact that it if it lost one leg, it will become very unstable, unlike the Imperial, uh, the Republic walkers that actually had six legs or sometimes more. The at was as much as about intimidation as anything else. The actual long legs of the vehicle was a response to real-world problems, though, encountered during the Republic's Galactic War, which was low ground clearance, actually was susceptible to low weapons at the ground, such as mines, things like that. Whereas the high ground clearance allowed it to stride over obstacles, vehicles, people if necessary, and remain relatively unfazed by landmines and other such things bothering it in the ground. It was also, as I said, an intimidation factor. This thing was huge. And despite the fact that if you had the right technology and the right weapons, like sometimes the Rebel Alliance had, these vehicles were actually pretty hard to take out. Unless you were an organized military, they weren't easy. They were heavily armored vehicles, and they were heavily armed. They were not just a pushover, as they were sometimes seen to be. Yes, they could be taken out if you knew how, but the same could be said for any vehicle. Just, just because, say, a tank is bad doesn't mean that I've got the weaponry to take it out. The most I own is a crossbow. And that ain't gonna do, that ain't gonna do squat even to a First World War tank, so... It's all about the tools you've got. The at did have several glaring flaws, as did often with Imperial vehicles, such as the Star Destroyer having limited to no point defence systems, relying mainly on its heavy weapons to take out small, fast-moving craft, which supposedly were designed to do it, but in practice were never very good at it. The at suffered similar problems with multiple blind spots. It had no, it, although it did have anti-personnel weapons, it were only all the weapons mounted on the front. This thing was big enough and heavy enough that you could have put a few additional guns on the belly, on the sides, on the top, to give it a more wide-ranging capability of taking out personnel trying to attack it, as well as perhaps actually just, just one point defense weapon. And we see these things able to shoot down fighter craft. But again, only if it's in front of it. If you put one on the back, on the top, aircraft trying to attack it will be much easier to shoot down. These things rely on cover fire from one another as much as their own weaponry, which were very impressive. The big guns on this thing could blast open bunkers, destroy enemy lines, wipe out whole scores of infantry and other vehicles quite easily. While the at, -AT itself, as I said, was very heavily armoured and could take punishment. It took quite heavy weapons to actually penetrate its armour, and even then you've got to do the damage to actually bring the thing down. The Empire used this, it was the most ubiquitous weapon on ground they pretty much had, it was infamous. It was used in pretty much every theatre, from Endor to Hoth. This was truly was an all-terrain vehicle, it could pretty much go anywhere. And there were various variants of the vehicle created, some of which were actually better than its stock model, including things like shields or additional weaponry in one form or another that gave it 
advantages. The version used by the First Order was considerably more heavily armoured and better armed, but the Imperial version, the 8080, the famous one, was built more for the Tarkin doctrine of intimidation rather than necessarily efficient warfare, but again, you got to have the weapons to take it out. And these things did carry quite a few embarked troops, as well as other smaller vehicles they could actually deploy. So, in a way, they did carry their own onboard anti-personnel weapons, in the fact that they were carrying a load of infantry. They did their job. At the Battle of Hoth, we see that what they could do, when properly supported by ATSTs, fire support, infantry, as part of a larger force, which is really what the Empire was designed to do. The Empire wasn't designed to send these things in on their own. Same with the Star Destroyer. It wasn't designed to work on its own. It was meant to have corvettes and picket ships and frigates and other such vessels working with it, along with starfighters. It on its own was meant to be a big battle wagon designed to take on capital ships and enemy fighter carriers and do planetary bombardment, but it wasn't really meant to deal with small snub fighters. That's what the TIE fighters were for and what the corvettes and other such ships were for, and other, other ships. But quite often the Empire would deploy these ships on their own because they were so thinly spread out. But the Star Destroyers did retain large amounts of ability to attack aground, including large numbers of onboard AT-80s, as well as custom-built ships that could actually transport them into battle. Now all these things put together actually was very resource-draining on the Empire, unlike the Republic that was all about interchangeability and usability for its vehicles and, flexi and a lot of flexibility, a lot of illities. The Empire was very into specialization. It required a specialist craft to transport it, it required specialist troops to operate, but when it came together, it was a thing of beauty and destruction and evil, but it was a, th a weapon to behold upon seeing it on the battlefield. And you knew, yeah, you get behind it, it can't really shoot you, but it could step on you. And even if you're behind it, yeah, it can't shoot you, but what are you going to do? You're not going to be able to hurt it. Not really. And eventually it's going to turn around. Or it's just going to deploy a load of stormtroopers that are going to just lay waste to you. So, you know I mean, this thing was a beautiful, monstrous weapon of war, built to intimidate, and intimidate it did. Up against a really organized army, on its own, it was not very useful. But when in support of other units, as I said, like the ATSCs, the Juggernauts, it suddenly became part of a larger, flexible war machine. Its main job, in and of itself, was just to take out enemy bunkers and then send in the troops. It wasn't necessarily the direct anti-infantry, anti-vehicle weapon. It was the big guns to support such weapons, but it wasn't necessarily the weapon for that. But like all things in the Empire, it was often deployed to do it, even though that wasn't, again, its main role. But who can argue that it was a big, dopey, beautiful machine? And The Empire Strikes Back is one of the best of the original trilogy. Can't because I, I've never been able to really pick one of the original trilogy movies to be my favourite, but it might be Empire Strikes Back if I was to pick one. Because, as an old-school imperialist, go Vader. Revenge of the Empire. Yeah, Rebel scum. <laughs> Where was I? I personally love the at, -AT. I think it's a fantastic and I think it's an underrated vehicle. And... It does have some weaknesses, which have been explored by much, much more detailed YouTubers than I'm going to go into with this vehicle. I'm pretty sure anyone watching this will know about all the stupid things. I mean, the thing you can take it out with a tripwire is pretty ridiculous, but then again, who would have anticipated that tactic? The Empire was expecting to be going up against guns, which is why they gave this thing such heavy armor in the first place. When we see this thing take on one of the old Republic walkers, it takes a direct shot from it, and it just keeps on trucking. Knocks the head a little bit, and it just readjusts itself and carries on firing. That tells you how evolved technologically it is. It just is a fairly poor design to work on its own in a vacuum. Well, there we have it. The Imperial 8080 Walker. Ludicrous and beautiful at the same time. Please comment down below. Tell me what you think of the AT-80. And I know there's a lot more to go into. There are many variants and various other models of this thing. I mean, it was 
but there's so many they all probably need a dedicated video each it does have various features and for example you can use them in space they can technically walk about in space perfectly happily put them on a space on the surface of a spaceship or an asteroid just like anakin did in the clone wars although he didn't do that with these specifically but they're the same base technology they were used extra in space at Kuat drive yards and in other facilities when necessary when desperate but going off there please like share subscribe comment down below and bye bye